Repeated pregnancy losses, you know, is, it's defined as uh, having three or more pregnancy losses. Uh, generally, we uh, here at Reproductive Medicine Associates recommend to patients to do a complete workup for repeat pregnancy losses after having two losses. When we think about repeated pregnancy losses, the causes can, can vary from couple to couple. In general, we think that uh, we have about five or six different causes that we're forced to rule out. First of all, we have to rule out the possibility of them losing pregnancies because of a uterine factor. That means that there's something inside of the endometrial cavity that it's inducing the miscarriage, like the presence of a large endometrial polyp or a submucous fibroid. Anything that deforms the shape and the configuration of the lining of the uterus could lead to a miscarriage. Furthermore, some patients are born with uterine congenital anomalies, like the presence of a uterine septum, which is a fibrotic septi that forms in the middle of the cavity, we know that those patients are definitely very predisposed uh, to have a miscarriage. So it is important that definitely we evaluate on these patients the endometrial cavity to check for normalcy. There's different ways to check the endometrial cavity. We can do it using an x-ray, like the hysterosalpingogram, or we can do a sailing sonogram. Uh, uh, a lot of times here in our unit, we actually do specifically three-dimensional scanning on this uteri to make sure that the cavity, it's not deformed or affected by anything. Certainly, obtaining karyotype or genetic information on both partners is gonna be very important. We know and we understand that patients that have karyotypical abnormalities or what's called balanced translocations can definitely be predisposed to have repeated miscarriages. So we, obtaining some blood, we do a test called a karyotype, which is a test that analyzes the, you know, all chromosomes, and we try to rule out the presence of a balanced translocation. If a balanced translocation is encountered, then we, we have to recommend for those couples uh, to do in vitro fertilization with pre-implantation genetic diagnosis because the tendency for them is to create or produce a large number of embryos that are going to be abnormal and therefore they're going to be prone potentially to be miscarried. A very important part of the workup again is to evaluate ovarian reserve or quality of the eggs. You know, we recognize in the general population that about 85 to 90 percent of all miscarriages will happen because there is something genetically abnormal with the embryo. In other words, most of the miscarriages, when they get tested, when you test the tissue of the miscarriage, you'll encounter that about 85 to 90 percent it's going to be what's called aneuploidic, which means that there is an abnormal number of chromosomes. Certainly most of the time that happens randomly, but certainly as we get older and, and, and as the quality of our eggs begins to diminish, that increases the possibility of having a miscarriage because of aneuploidy. So testing for that, it's going to be very important. A small percentage of patients, maybe 10-15% of patients at most, but, but certainly we do encounter couples that have had multiple miscarriages that have a problem that relates to what is called thrombophilia. That, that basically what that means is that there are patients that have tendencies or they are prone to hypercoagulate uh, small capillaries, in this particular case capillaries that connect you know, the fetus obviously to the maternal circulation that have the tendency to, to hypercoagulate or clot and therefore cut the circulation to the fetus that we know tends to be, you know, potentially a cause of miscarriage in some patients. Still, you know, in miscarriages or in repeated pregnancy losses, a significant proportion of the population is not going to be able to be diagnosed. Ultimately, they're recognized as couples that have just unexplained miscarriages and you know they basically uh, you know they basically are 
counsel to just try to get pregnant again, and we do recognize that a lot of those patients do well. In general, we think that the prognosis for these couples is very good. If they have uterine factors, we correct the uterine factors. If they have genetic etiologies, we select embryos that we know are genetically normal via pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. If they have endocrine issues, we treat those endocrinopathies, you know, such as hypothyroidism or again, ovulatory dysfunction. If there is thrombophilia or autoimmunity present, that can be treated. So I think we can conclude that in general, these patients tend to do very well.